Hey y'all, data guy here. And today I have my airflow hat on because I have an exciting video for you, which is everything new that is coming in Airflow 3.0. Um, so Airflow 3.0 is coming out towards the end of the month. I think April 21st is the official release day at this point in time. Um, but there are pre-release candidates that you can download right now. Um, and so I'm going to be using the Astro CLI, or I'm using the Astro CLI right now to run one of those pre-release candidates so that you can see all the new features that are coming in Airflow 3.0, starting with this very new and very much improved Airflow UI. Um, so we're going to get into all the new things that have changed around Airflow, new features, new functionality, uh, as well as some of the backend changes as well. Um, and without further ado, let's get into it and talk Airflow 3, the next evolution in Airflow. So the first big change is that now the Airflow UI is completely React-based. Um, so no longer do you have a UI that is based on really antiquated functionality, really hard to actually update and build upon. Now it is React and Flask based, so really bringing it up to speed with the latest design standards for web-based applications. And also coming with that is dark mode. Um, so you now have a nice dark mode, which I obviously have defaulted to here um, for actually viewing your different DAGs and tasks and the Airflow UI as a whole. Um, another kind of unspoken benefit of it too is it's going to make it a lot easier for you to develop your own plugins and extend the Airflow UI in new ways. Um, one big limiting factor of Airflow's previous design was it's really poorly designed and poorly coded uh, UI. So this is a much better, more extensible way to surface the Airflow UI. Um, it is does require some big changes. You know, it's going to take some time to figure out where everything goes and making sure that there is one-to-one -one functionality, but. The goal is now you have a much steadier platform to build upon um, if you want to add more you know, features and functionality specific to your use case. Um, and then also you'll notice we have this new home screen. So instead of opening up with the view of all of your DAGs, now we're introduced to this kind of view, which is mainly centered on, hey, how many DAG runs, uh, how many task instances, but not these specific DAGs themselves. Um, you also have this tab on the right here for asset events. So a big theme in Airflow Thread O is kind of the evolution of data assets uh, into first class entities. And data assets are essentially just kind of logical entities that represent a data set, in this case, you know, current astronauts that lives in a database, or things like object store, you know, files live in object storage, machine learning models. Um, initially these were called Airflow data sets, but as you know, the Airflow community realized there's a lot more pieces of data than just kind of strictly data sets. This is now um, going to be the new home for tracking those events, triggering off those events, um, doing a lot of the asynchronous scheduling, which we've seen, you know, Airflow uh, and Airflow 3.0 especially moving towards. You know, instead of just time-based, now things are a lot more event-driven. Where you know, data set gets updated. Now uh, the an Airflow DAG runs. Speaking of an Airflow DAG. You still have a DAGs view, um, in this case where I just have you know, a single DAG here. You either have kind of a more of a modular menu or just a strict list of your different DAGs. Um, so if I click into a DAG view, you'll also see big change from the previous view of how you know, that basically DAGs were for surfaced in the UI. Um, so now you don't really have any of that dead space at the top with different tabs where they used to be. Now I go in, I select different DAG runs, um, different you know, DAG versions, um, and here I can see all the different task instances for that particular DAG. Um, also, if I extend this, I can see, again, different task instances for this particular task. Um, I can also see any events. So if there were any events that were triggered by this data set, uh, or any data sets that were events that were triggered by this DAG, those would also appear here. Um, and if I just look at the DAG at a whole, um, separate, and I can go over here to the top left and hit graph view. Um, so you still have the ability to view graphs, graph view um, in the UI. You can also you know, look at your tasks here. Um, and so this isn't going away. You still have this kind of ability within the UI here. Um, so you know, I don't think graph view is ever going to go away, right? It's a really great tool. Um, but now you have the ability to switch between the two. Um, I can go in here. I can pick on a particular task group and see all the different task instances. You can see the mapped index here, right? You can also now override this. Um, and also you can see the DAG version that each task was run with. 
Um, so now if you click on a specific ta DAG run, you'll actually see the DAG version that that DAG was run on. Um, and this is a really cool and very, very highly requested feature, which was you know the ability to have different versions of your DAG appear within the UI. So now if you make any changes to your DAG, and there is some you know setup that's gonna need to happen under the scenes with you know aligning it to Git and having unique identifiers, but the general idea is you know, you now have the ability to, if you make changes to your DAG, have the previous versions of that DAG still surfaced in the UI, viewable, so I can, you know, if I had different versions that had more or less tasks, I'd be able to go back, look at those historical DAG runs, um, and not only see the task and DAG run state for that, but also see the different versions of the code. Um, so you can actually see that here, where you know, right now I just have V1, but if I wanted to go look through previously deployed versions or previously run versions of this piece of code, I can now go in the UI, go to this code view and view that. So really, honestly, gigantic leap forward for Airflow in terms of, you know, this is, makes a lot of CICD processes a lot easier, makes your DAGs a lot more auditable, um, also makes, you know, iterating on a DAG a lot easier of a process, right? Because now if something goes wrong, you still have those previous states, you can easily revert back, you don't have to, you know, track all this individually and take snapshots within your CICD provider. Now Airflow itself is going to keep track of your DAG changes, changes to your code, and give you the ability to revert back to those previous versions. Um, so really, really awesome thing to see here um, and something I'm, I'm personally very excited about. Now another big feature that's added to the DAG screen is now the ability to do backfills. Um, so here, if you want to do backfills of previous run versions of this DAG, what I can do is choose Run Backfill, um, choose a date range, um, let's say, 09, 2024 to, let's just do all runs. Um, and then I'm actually just gonna pick this on a graph because it's gonna be exponentially easier and rerun. So here, now I can run a backfill for a previous set date of range, um, and it'll actually show up as a separate run process within the UI. So I can still run my DAG normally, and backfills will still run in parallel to it. Um, and before, the only way you could run backfills was through the Airflow CLI um, or through direct code triggers, what not through the UI. Um, it was only run by that CLI command as a separate process. So if you kill the CLI command, backfill would drop. Wasn't really well suited for running lots of backfills either. Now you have the ability to run backfills as their own separate dedicated entity in the UI for many backfills at a time in parallel. Um, and you also have historical runs records of all your backfills. Um, so really much better support for backfills within the UI uh, because Airflow is being used a lot more for ML processes and processes where you need to backfill for a previous set data range um, really in, in really common scenarios. So it's being used a lot more, so developed a lot more. Um, so you really have a lot uh, big improvements in the backfill category. So if you were using backfills, struggling with them before, really, really useful feature now, um, and also coordinated by the scheduler rather than just a hacky CLI process that didn't really work super well. Um, so that is almost everything on the DAG view. You also have trigger, you know, this will pop up with the advanced options to select for a logical date. You can actually run for specific previous run IDs. So if you want to run a previous version of, of a DAG with the previous run of DAG code, you can set that to configuration JSON and then also a DAG run notes here as well. Um, and then you also can reparse DAG, but that was already in the UI in 2.7. You have DAG documentation now as well. So this is docs that will appear via the UI. So you have a nice little dedicated pop-up menu for descriptors around DAGs. Uh, so another nice little quality of life improvement as well here. Um, another thing that is you know, hard to show, but equally important is there's actually been a big change into the underlying structure of Airflow. Um, so now instead of everything communicating with the Airflow meta database, now we have just the scheduler um, and the API server, which is a new component, which is tied into the web server that are only communicating with the Airflow Meta Database. The worker pods now actually will be communicating with that API server, um, which opens up, you know, number one, more secure connection uh, via API keys, um, instead of just connecting directly into the Airflow Meta Database, but also it allows those workers to be run in completely external locations. So you're gonna have the ability to run workers, you know, have an Airflow scheduler that sits in, a, in the cloud, have a set of workers that run on-prem, and all the workers will need to post back to the cloud version is that, hey, uh, this process is run, this has been successful, but none of the actual information around that running process. Um, so really opening up a lot of use cases where Airflow wasn't able to get in there because it was you know, 
to secure an environment. There were a lot of issues with you know Airflow actually being able to run in there and, and trigger processes and receive all the information it needed to previously to actually run and have those workers connect to the Airflow database, and post their state. Now that's opened up a whole new realm of possibility with, hey, now I can have many sets of workers that are all gonna run in different locations, um, as well as you, know, you now also have much better uh, connectivity between the workers and the Airflow Meta database so you can scale a lot easier as well um, because it isn't just dependent on that single point of failure in the Airflow Meta database to have a dedicated API server for handling all those high volume requests. Um, so really useful feature functionality there as well. Um, you also have data set events now. So if I go in and click into a particular asset here, you'll see I'll see all previous asset events. Um, I'll be able to see also any DAGs and tasks that were upstream or downstream of this data asset. Um, if I go into click a data asset, you'll actually see you know the DAG code, the log file for that particular update to that data asset. So like you talked about, you know these are logical entities that represent changes or you know storing of data into different locations. Um, and then you can use these as trigger locations for downstream operations as well and say, hey, every time current astronauts is run, then any DAG that is relying on current astronauts is also going to run. Um, so something where you know this is basically just a port over of the Airflow 2.10 version of the data asset data sets view, but it is going to set again, set a stage for a lot of development now and making these assets more of a rich collection of all the information around a particular data piece of data. Um, you also have the option to manually create asset events through the UI now. So if you wanted to directly create an asset event um, and just you know manually trigger it, you don't have to trigger a DAG. You can just manually create an asset event. Um, and also you can trigger these via the API. Um, you already could during Airflow 2.10, but now you have it via the UI. So a lot easier to use in practice. Um, you also now have another screen for uh, events rather than just, uh, you know, DAG runs. So these are events that could be, and, you know, again, keeping with the more asynchronous approach of Airflow 3.0, all the kind of events for, hey, you know, this was triggered by an external API. I had a backfill triggered. Um, it's not just DAG runs you want to look at now. It's actually all kind of events that were triggered, whether they were backfills or from an API or just on a regular schedule. Um, and then you also have same old XCOM screen everyone knows and loves. Um, so yeah, that's really everything I have to show you in Airflow 3.0. Um, I really wanted to make this video because it's been highly requested and Airflow 3.0 is finally coming out. Really exciting time. Um, if you've been working with Airflow for a while, this is you know a lot of quality of life features that people have been asking for for a while. So let me know in the comments, what do you think? Do you think there's something that you really wished was an Airflow 3.0 that isn't? Um, you know, I'm always talking to devs, so always happy to surface something back from the community. Um, but I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you learned something. I hope you have a great rest of your day. Did a guy out.